Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to look at piecewise functions and the concept of continuity. Uh, you can also say it continuity, uh, but most of the time you'll hear people say continuity. So uh, the concept of continuity is going to most likely be new to you in pre-calculus. The piecewise functions, you've actually done those in the past, but maybe they weren't referred to as piecewise functions. But uh, basically, some functions can be expressed as a single continuous function, like the line y equals x, for example. Um, but some need to be specified in pieces, hence the name piecewise functions. Like this one, for example, is in pieces. So we have uh, multiple, um, we're going to have to describe this piecewise function uh, with multiple pieces. We have a piece here, we have a piece here, we have a piece here, we have a piece here. Okay, so there's actually one, two, three, four pieces uh, to be able to describe this piecewise function. And the continuity comes in because we are not continuous throughout this whole function. If you are continuous, that means you never have to pick up your pencil to draw the function. In this case, we could draw down to here and to here, but then we would have to pick our pencil up to draw that point, and we would have to pick up our pencil to draw this horizontal uh, line segment here. Okay, so that is where the uh, piecewise functions and continuity kind of merge. Okay, so if it's discontinuous, you have to pick up your pencil to draw it again. That's the easiest way that I can describe that concept. So let's apply this here. Uh, we are asked to write in piecewise form this function graph below. So what we are going to do is we are going to write this if this function is f of x and then we are going to put a large brace or bracket here and we are going to write each piece, describe it, and then we are going to write the domain that it is good for. Okay, so let's start with this piece right here. This is a line segment here. So we just find the slope and we find the y-intercept and we can write the equation for that line. And then we restrict the domain or specify the domain that that applies to or that applies to that line. Okay, so let's find the slope. So this point's going right through the corner of the boxes and this point is going through. So we can find the slope that way. So we start always at the left and we're going to count uh, down first. We are changing y first. So it's down one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we know we have a negative slope and it's down six to start. Uh, and then it's to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's a slope of negative six sevenths. So negative six sevenths x and the y-intercept is a positive 2, so it's negative 6 sevenths x plus 2. So that's a little short review on lines um, there. So that specifies the segment. Now we need to apply the domain that that's good for. Okay, so that would be when x is greater than or equal to this x-coordinate, which is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So when x is greater than or equal to negative 7, I'm saying it's greater than because it's to the right and uh, it's equal to because that circle is filled in. And then that's good all the way until x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, So we're using inequality uh, notation here to describe this domain. Our symbols always point to the left. If it's filled in or it's defined there, then we put an equal to bar underneath. If it's not defined there, we have an open circle, for example, then we don't put the equal to bar underneath. All right, so that's this part right here. Uh, we'll use another color for this next section right here. So this one is also a line segment here, and it is going perfectly through the corners of these grid squares. So we know it has a slope of one. It's going up one over one, right? So that's a slope of one. So that's just y equals x. 1x for the slope, 1 for the slope, so we're just going to write it as x, and then write the y-intercept, which is at positive 2, so it's just x plus 2. Now we specify the domain, so we put x in the middle, we're going to say greater than or equal to 0 here, because it's defined at 0, and then it goes out here to 1, 2, 3. 
and I'm just going to use less than 3 here, not equal to because we have an open circle. All right, now this next part, we'll describe this point right here. So that is f of x, or y, is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So f of x, or y, equals 7 when x is equal to 3. Okay, so that basically that's the ordered pair 3 comma 7 right there. Okay, it's good for this domain and y equals 7 when x is 3. Okay, last piece of the function here. We have a horizontal line segment. So that's y or f of x equals negative 2 right here when x is greater than 3. Okay, because it continues on forever, so we can just say x is greater than 3. All right, so there are the four parts to that piecewise function. All right, we're going to work several more examples, but this is the process. All right, example 4 is going to ask you to name all the discontinuities on this piecewise function. And you can see here that's occurring right here, those three spots. We've got a discontinuity right there and here. We're, we're not continuous right there. And that's always when x is equal to 1, 2, 3. So we can just say this piecewise function is discontinuous when x equals 3. There is a discontinuity at x equals 3. And notice how 3 comes into play several times in our domain statements here. All right? Okay. Um, let's look at example 2 now. Another example of a piecewise function. All right, example 2. So uh, we're, we've got uh, one, two, three pieces here. I'm going to write, we're going to start with f of x equals, and then we're going to put our brace here, and we'll put each piece in. I usually start at the leftmost part, so that's going to be all of this right here. So that is a horizontal line segment of y equals 2. Okay, it's uh, horizontal lines are y equals a number, and so in this case it's y equals 2 because the y coordinate is always 2. So f of x equals 2, y equals 2, same thing. So I'm going to write 2 here. Now we're going to specify the domain. So that is going to be when x is less than 1, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So when x is less than negative 4. So it's, this is described as f of x equals 2 when x is less than negative 4. Okay? All right, next part. We'll just use this point down here. So that is y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the negative direction. So y equals negative 6 when x is equal to negative 1, 2, 3, 4 x equals negative 4. So that's just the ordered pair negative 4 comma negative 6. Okay, this next part. This looks like a parabola, right? Uh, it doesn't appear to be stretched in any way because we find our vertex right here and we go over 1, up 1, and we hit the graph. We go over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, and we hit the graph again. So there are no stretches. If you need to review the parabola unit, uh, that would be, uh, I believe, unit 7 pre-cal. Uh, to work on the equation of this parabola segment, but um, hopefully you remember that. So uh, the next thing we need to do is track our vertex. So it went left 2 and up 1, 2, 3. Okay, left 2 and up 3. So that is going to be um, x plus 2 quantity squared. That gives us the left 2, and then it's plus 3 out here to the side because we moved it up 3. Okay, so that's x plus 2 quantity squared plus 3. Now we apply the domain statement. So that is when x is greater than negative 4. And that's it, right? We could say less than positive infinity here, but I'm going to erase that and we're just going to call it... Um, x greater than negative 4. We don't need to, it's simpler to list it this way. It means the same thing, x greater than negative 4.
this continues on forever. It's hard to see there, but you do have an arrow where this parabola goes on forever. Okay, so just three pieces there. Example 5 will ask us where are the discontinuities here, and that's pretty easy to see. Notice you have negative 4 here, negative 4 here, negative 4 showing up here, and you can see the discontinuities right there, right? So it's pretty easy to see that the discontinuity occurs when x equals negative 4. You have to pick up your pencil here when x equals negative 4. All right, let's look at example three next. All right, here we have example three. So this is a little bit different with the way it's asking the question, but it's the same process. So uh, we'll graph the following piecewise function. So they're giving us the opposite. They're giving us what we generated in example one and two, and they're asking us to generate the graph, which was actually given to us before. Okay, so we will just draw a coordinate plane here like this and we can label our x and y axis here just like that and then we just start graphing the pieces so I usually try to work left to right so uh, looking at these statements we can see that negative 3 x equals negative 3 is an important spot right uh, because that's showing up so um, so the leftmost part of the graph is is described right here it's y equals x when x is less than negative 3 Okay, so we have to think about that. I'm going to go ahead and label negative 1, 2, 3 here so we can keep that straight. So y equals x, remember, is just a uh, line with a slope of 1 right through the origin like this, right? But it's only true for this function when x is less than negative 3. So all of this right here is going to have to be erased. Okay, so what we really have here is a line and it's less than negative 3 so we're going to draw an open circle here it's not equal to and then we just draw the rest of the y equals x line here so down with an arrowhead like that so it's y equals x this line segment is y equals x when x is less than negative 3 so from negative 3 to the left y equals x describes this piecewise function okay I'm gonna put pink for the arrow there so we can keep track of what we're doing. I'm going to go uh, with blue for this one. Alright, so the next part we have y equals 5 when x equals negative 3. Okay, so that's y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 when x equals negative 3. So that's going to be a solid, just a dot right there. Basically the ordered pair, negative 3, comma 5, and that's it. All right, so the last piece is this part here. We have a square root, and we have been shifted left 3 and up 2. So it's the standard shape like this of a square root function. You can review that in the earlier Unit 8 lesson videos on uh, for the pre-cal playlist if you need help with the square roots. But it has been moved left 3 and up 2. So left 3, up 2. 2 it's going to start right here and it's greater when x is greater than negative 3 so I'm going to have an open circle here it's not filled in and then I just graph in my square root function like that okay uh, exactly where it crosses I'm not sure we could figure that out but I'm not going to mess with that right now but that's basically what this would look like. Now example 6 is going to ask us for the discontinuities of this piecewise function and that's pretty easy to see that that's when x is equal to negative 3. Right? All of this part right here and then you see it showing up several times here. Okay, When x equals negative 3 we have a discontinuity. We have to pick up our pencil uh, to draw this piecewise function. Alright, let's look at the last two examples quickly. All right, here we have the last two examples. So example seven says, draw an example of a continuous function. Okay, so I'm going to draw in coordinate plane here. And I could draw really, uh, it really doesn't matter how I draw it. I'm gonna draw it like this with a terminating dot here and an arrow like this. So this would be continuous because I do not have to pick up my pencil to draw this function. Okay, I don't have to pick up my pencil anywhere. Even though it has a terminating dot here, it's still continuous and that it goes on forever. I don't have to pick up my pencil ever in order to um, draw this graph. All right? There are no discontinuities. 
Okay, example eight says draw an example of a discontinuous function and note the location of any discontinuity. So draw coordinate plane here and for example I can draw um, a line like this. I have a terminating circle there. I'm going to draw an arrowhead there and then another line segment, horizontal line segment like this. So, and I'm going to call this x equals 2 right here. So that would mean I have discontinuities, a discontinuity at x equals 2. So I've described it. If I wanted to make my function here defined at x equals 2, I would need to fill in one of the circles. So I'll fill that in. So this is defined at x equals 2, but it is discontinuous at x equals 2 because I have to pick up my pencil. All right, so that is a wrap on the video. I am uh, going to show you uh, in a second video uh, how to put these piecewise functions like we did up here, uh, all of these, how to put those in your calculator and restrict the domain. So uh, keep a lookout, keep on the lookout for that video if you want to see how to do that. All right, uh, again, I'm Mr. Howard. I'll see you in the next video.